Hello everyone! Welcome to Physify, a series of video tutorials in Signboard Channel. I'm your tutor, Sir Jose. In this video, we are going to discover the different types of force. But before we proceed, here's our learning goal. Classify forces as contact and non-contact. In the previous videos, you learned that a force is a push or a pull that can change the motion of an object. It has a magnitude and direction, and that's why it is a vector quantity. And to represent force, we use the arrow as its visual or graphical model. You also learned that a force can make a stationary or motionless object move, make it speed up, slow down, change direction, or stop. In addition, it can change the physical appearance of an object. Now, let's zoom in on the key part of the definition. Force is an interaction. But what does it mean? It means a force always involves two objects. One thing doing the pushing or pulling and another thing being pushed or pulled. Remember, you can't push or pull nothing. There always has to be an interactor and a receiver. In the previous video that we had, opening the door demonstrates the definition. Force exists because your hand interacted with the door by touching it. Forces that require physical contact or touch are called contact forces, while the forces that do not need physical contact or touch are called non-contact forces. Let's explore contact forces. There are seven subtypes of contact forces. We have the normal force, the applied force, friction force, tension force, spring force, air resistance, and buoyant force. Let's go over each subtypes of forces. Let's start with the normal force. The normal force is a force exerted by a surface in contact with an object, preventing the object from passing through it, like a ghost. Normal force is also known as support force because it supports objects by keeping it from passing through materials. Before we continue, let's have a fun fact. Did you know? While it is easier to remember normal force as a normal or natural property of a solid material to counter any force, the term normal is actually a mathematical term especially in geometry, which means perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle to another line. According to merriamwebster.com, the word normal is from the Latin word normalis, which primarily means made according to a carpenter's square or forming a right angle. So, in the case of standing, 
the force from the floor or the ground is perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle to the surface of the shoe's soles. Therefore, this is called a normal force. Moving on, we have applied force. It is a force exerted directly on an object. Example, pushing a chair, holding a ball, throwing or catching it. Everything we do is applied force. The next type of contact force is the friction force, or simply friction. This is a force that resists or counters or against the sliding or rolling of one solid object over another. Example, if the surface of the floor is rough, then it's much harder to sweep or scrub it. The rougher the floor, the stronger is its friction. Friction helps us avoid sliding. Our next contact force is tension force. It is a pulling force exerted by a stretched rope, string, or cable attached to an object. Now we have the spring force or restoring force. This is a force exerted by a spring when it returns to its original position after being stretched or compressed. This is why this is called restoring force because it goes back to its original shape. Air resistance is another type of contact force. This is the force exerted by air against an object moving through it. Example, when a skydiver opens his parachute, the air or wind pushes the parachute up, slowing the speed of falling. This is also the reason why, during strong winds, it's a bit difficult to walk against the direction of the wind. And the last contact force is the buoyant force. Buoyant force is the upward force exerted by a fluid. And when we say fluid, it's either in a gas form or liquid form. Or that opposes the weight of an object immersed in it. In other words, the buoyant force is the lift you get when you're in a fluid, for example, water or air. It is the upward push that makes things feel lighter in water or causes some things like a beach ball to float. So, those are the subtypes of contact forces. The normal force, applied force, friction force, tension force, spring force, air resistance, and the buoyant force. Again, contact forces are forces exerted by objects that are touching or in direct physical contact. Now, let's move to the next type of force, the non-contact forces, or also known as field forces. Non-contact forces are forces that do not need touch or physical contact. There are three subtypes of non-contact forces, the gravitational force or simply the gravity, electrostatic force, and the magnetic force. 
first non-contact force in our list is the gravitational pull, or simply the gravity. Gravitational force is the universal attractive or pulling force between all objects that have mass. It is the force that pulls things together. Anything that has mass, or when we say mass, it means the contact or the total stuff that an object has. So this mass pulls on every other thing that has mass. We can't feel the pull from small objects. So, example, the earth is so big and heavy that its gravity pulls you and everything else down. This is what keeps us on the ground. Next is the electrostatic force. This is the attractive or repulsive force between two charged objects. It means that the electrostatic force is the push or pull between things that have an electrical charge. It's what makes your hair stick to a balloon after you rub it on your head. Imagine tiny invisible particles called charges. They come in two types, the positive, like protons, and the negative, like electrons. The electrostatic force is the rule that tells these charges how to behave with each other. The rule is very simple. Opposites attract likes repel like charges push each other away while opposite charges pull each other together when you rub the balloon on your hair it makes the electrons from your hair move to the balloon the electrons has negative charge so since they leave your hair and move to the balloon, your hair becomes positively charged and the balloon becomes negatively charged. Since they have opposite charges, attraction happens. And the third subtype of non-contact force is the magnetic force. The magnetic force is the attraction or repulsion that arises or happens between electrically charged particles because of their motion, just like the electrostatic force. It's the force that makes magnets work. A magnet has a north and south pole. Like poles push away. Opposite poles pull together. It is an invisible push or pull from a magnet. And those are the subtypes of the non-contact forces. Gravitational force or gravitational pull or simply gravity. Magnetic force and the electrostatic force. Again, the non-contact forces or field forces do not need touch or physical contact. So, these are the things that you learned today. There are two types of force. The contact force and the non-contact force. The contact force is a type of force that requires physical contact or touching. While the non-contact force is a force that does not require physical contact or touching. There are subtypes of contact forces. We have the normal force, applied force, friction force, tension force, spring or restoring force, air resistance, 
or sometimes this is also called the drag and buoyant force. On the other hand, the subtypes of non-contact force are gravitational pull or sometimes gravity or you can also say gravitational force. The electrostatic force and the magnetic force. The electrostatic force and the magnetic force together are known as electromagnetic force. To check your understanding, do this activity. Let's investigate. Download the activity 3 through the link in the comment section. In this activity, you are going to complete the table by supplying the needed information. In the first column, you will find the list of activities or situations that show force being exerted. Next to it is the column with the list of objects that are exerting force. In the third and fourth column, you are going to identify if the action or force is a push or a pull or both. Use a check mark. In the fifth column, identify whether the force is contact or non-contact. And in the last column, specify the subtype of force. Again, you can download the activity sheet through the link in the comment section. Have fun! If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook. See you in the next part of our video tutorials.